What up, fishes? Welcome back to the channel. Chef David Buadana here, and today I'm holding three beautiful Japanese whitefish. You ask why? Well, I'm gonna tell you why. We're gonna fillet all of these, show you different techniques, and how these three whitefish are different from each other, and they are the building blocks, foundation of a sushi omakase. Let's do it. All right, fresh catch of the day. Here it is, the mystery box, how it all comes together. So this box here contains fish from Japan. People ask all the questions, how long does it take? Is it frozen? Is it flash frozen? Is it fresh? Is it on dry ice? Many questions. So I wanna kinda explain to you guys the economics of the fish business. So this box here is from Toyosu Express, Toyosu Market, which is the new Skiji Market in Tokyo. As you can see here, I'm gonna zoom in for you in a minute. It's gonna say uh, Miami, which is my closest international airport. I'm in the East Coast here. Um, and it's gonna tell me what's inside my box. This box literally flew from Japan with fish in it, with just ice. And you're probably wondering, how does this fish arrive on time and fresh? Well, here's how it works. Okay, we have here Akamutsu, which is uh, Nodokuro, Japan. That's one of the fish in here. The next fish we're gonna see is gonna be, this is Maidai, Maidai right there, from Japan. The other fish in this box is going to be King Medai, Japan. And there's that word fresh, you wanna see that, that's not frozen. On top here, I almost forgot right here, I have also a box of sea urchin in here, product of Japan, for restaurant use only. And this one came into Miami International Airport and provided by True World Japan Corporation. And here's the exact city and town of Tokyo, zip code and everything. The box is still sealed. As you can see, before I open it, I'm going to break the formula of fish defying the laws of time. 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 Okay, from where I am and Tokyo is, it's approximately 7,500 miles away. A flight from the east coast of America, from either New York or Miami, is 14 hours. If we travel at approximately 530 miles an hour, which is the speed of a plane, and Japan, from where I am, is 14 hours ahead. If this flight landed Tuesday, 12 p.m. my time, this is when it landed, Eastern time zone, it took off Japan, Japan at Tuesday, 12 p.m. So in theory, it took zero time to get here, so the fish was suspended in air. And if you've ever flown from East Coast, like New York to um, Tokyo, when you fly there, you lose a day. When you leave, when you come back from Tokyo, you sometimes arrive five minutes earlier. You went back in time by five minutes. So at the end of my day, or before I start service at 6 p.m. or 5 p.m., whatever it is, I can order fish from Japan, go to sleep, wake up, and that fish will be here the next day in 12 to 14 hours. So today's video is focusing on three of the most predominant Japanese whitefish that come in the omakase. And that's going to be the first and the foremost maidai, which is uh, like the king of the ocean in Japan. Uh, Japanese maidai is available year round. It's got a great oil content, delicious, nice and firm, yields very well. And they do farm raise them and they are wild, easy to catch, and they're delicious. The next one 
is Kimidai. So Maidai, Kimidai, that's the snapper family. That's why it's red snapper or sea bream. And this one is golden eye snapper. And these fish are caught down below in very, very dark depths. That's why they have these large eyes to be more receptive to light. And they are caught on electric rod because of how deep they really are. A more sought out, more desirable fish, more of a um, superior snapper. And the taste is gonna be much different, a little more oily, and just uh, delicious. Mm -hmm. So Akamutsu, this is the most sought out after, as far as white fish. So when people talk about, oh, why is uh, this white fish different from that fish? It's gonna be the texture, but also gonna be the oil. And the Akamutsu is, I almost nickname it the poor man's Toro because of how much oil it has. And it produces that much of, um, of aburi when we sear it. We're gonna do a searing thing. You're gonna see, I'm gonna show you later. This fish is highly, highly regarded. This fish, and this fish costs the same. Go figure. White fish called shiromi is the beginning foundation of omakase. And that's why usually in a sushi bar, you tend to get a flounder hirame, or you get like a kampachi amberjack or a maidai red snapper as a first one or two, three pieces. It's going to be a white fish. And that starts a progression of the flavors. But to add akamutsu, into the 12th or 15th piece of a 20 piece omakase, that's a bold move on the chef, but also because that fish is so high prized. So today I'm gonna to show you the different techniques, preparations, and why this fish is so sought out after, and why this fish is so embedded in the sushi game. Maidai, very good. We can simmer it, we can grill it, we can do nitsuke, which is a reduction. Um, either way the chef wants to do it, usually for staff meal, uh, we'll, I'm gonna prepare it so the chef knows what to do with it later. A little something something. Let's save it for staff meal. Let's move on. That's the circle of life, right there. We eat shrimp, they eat shrimp. So that's how you can see that's real nature. But that's the beautiful thing to see that it's been eating very well. It had a full stomach before it was caught. It was eating shrimp. Those are like little beautiful little shrimp there. Sometimes you find squid. You find all kinds of things. And that's the circle of life.
one technique we're going to do today is we're going to take the skin completely off, which is probably the most common way that you like to eat your sushi. People get a little weirded out, like, oh, I don't like the skin on there or the shiny skin. Um, a few things. The skin can be edible. I'm going to show you how to do that afterwards. Another thing is the skin is shiny. That's actually a compliment to the chef, especially when you eat a silver fish, ikarimono, which is a silver fish, literally. But a lot of fish actually have a glimmering silver color to it, or in this case, the mai dai, when I when I properly skin it, it's actually going to leave all the muscles and the red kind of uh, ink blot, if you will. And that means it's a perfect skin. Skinning fish is probably the most technical and difficult part for sushi chefs, and we grade each other on how well you skin a fish. So customer won't realize it. Also, you, don't, you won't really see fish in this large form. You might see it when you're, if you're the first seating and all the fish is in front of you, you can see the different colors and you might see all the silver, but this is how sushi chefs grade each other and skinning fish is the most technical. Technical. So what you wanna do is kind of just get in there on the edge and right where the skin separates from the meat, kind of, you can even use a little towel here. You can just grab it. And that's what you want to see. That's that nice little layer of fat there. All that, is what you want to see on the skin, nothing left. Perfect. It's almost transparent. Okay, this is gonna be the Kimidai, skin still on, not seared. This is gonna be the Kimidai golden eye snapper, skin off, because you'll see a little bit of that residue of the uh, gold there. Then you have Mai Dai, the red snapper here. Then we have the Mai Dai without the skin. That's how you want to see it, like that. Then we have the Akamutsu, the sea perch, that's with the skin. For whitefish, you can see how different the color is. This is more of a opaque kind of white. You can almost see kind of through it. This is more of a cloudy white, like a uh, very thick and also thick to the touch. And this one is going to be very uh, kind of clear. You can see the fibers on here. All those one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, about like 30 tendons, if you will, as they space out there. 
and that's the Japanese. This is the this is the Mai Dai, and this is the Kinmi Dai. So this is the Kinmi Dai without the skin. You can still see how it's definitely more pinkish. This is a quarter piece of the Mai Dai, the red snapper. This is half the loin of the fish of the Kinmi Dai, golden eye snapper, and this is half of the fish of the Akamutsu Nodokuro or the Japanese rosy sea perch or black throat. And next step we're going to do is we're going to blanch all three fish with hot water. It's a very simple technique. It helps make the skin kind of shrink so it's edible and not chewy. And you can still see the beautiful color of the fish skin, but yet you can eat it. The technique of searing with the hot water is you want to kind of shrivel the skin and not blanch and cook the meat. So the technique would be to lay the fish downward, but you don't want to go this way. When we pour the hot water, if you do it this way, this is the way the scales run. So if you hit the hot water, it's going to just go right over it. But if you hit the hot water going this way, going backwards, if you will, then you're going to see how it can catch each little groove. Okay, came out beautiful. We're going to now pat it down, bring it back to the sushi bar, and now you can see, we'll do a comparison of before and after, how tight, also how firm it is now, the scales. The Mai Dai Red Snapper is ready to be made into sushi. We're gonna slice it into netta, N-E-T-A. Netta means these little uh, four by two pieces we make. Four by two is the reference I'm using from my other video when I make uh, sushi blocks. And then we break them down into finger sized pieces, which I'm gonna show you right now. We have the netta two ways. We're gonna do without the skin, as is, and then we're gonna do with the skin on. You can see the contrary already. Two different looking uh, pieces of fish, but it's the same exact fish. Two different textures now because one was seared and one was not seared. And it's also going to affect the taste. So here's red snapper, my dai, two ways.
Okay, what we're gonna do is gonna be aburi, which is gonna be a sear technique, and the akamutsu, the sea perch, has one of the highest oil contents for a whitefish, so you're gonna see how it's gonna react to the fire. I want to do a little quick comparison of the three types of fish with the skin on it and I'm going to sear them and you're going to see how much oil comes out. So here we have the Maidai, red snapper, the least oiliest, the Kimidai, probably more desirable, oily and a softer flesh, and the Akamutsu, the Japanese sea perch, which is the creme à the creme white fish. You can see how much oil comes out. So you can see here, if I take my finger and I touch how much oil comes out of this fish. It's a very oily fish, as you can see. And then as you can see, this fish, the Kinmidai, not as oily as the other one. And the third finger, not, barely nothing. So that Akamutsu really is full of oil. my fishy friends. That was a lot of fun going through three of the most incredible white fish from Japan. I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you liked that episode and you want to see more, you gotta subscribe, ring the bell, and a little thumbs up. Until next time, sleep well my fishy friends. 7,500 miles from New York to Miami, but if it goes the same day and from the earth, and the earth is no, well, if you take two times the speed of the plane and then you ask Elon Musk, you're like, okay, if I get Elon Musk to give me some rockets, and he's like, okay, you can take the rockets, but you need to bring Pepe. And I was like, well, who's Pepe? He's like, all right, well, E equals MC squared times the speed of life plus Toyosu market, and then Pepe Sylvia. Pepe Sylvia! Pepe Sylvia! So I go up to Pepe's office, and what do I find out, man? What do I find out? There is no Pepe Sylvia. There's no Pepe Sylvia, you gotta be kidding me! I got boxes full of Pepe! Yes.